This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Do you drive a vehicle? Then you'll find AutoCorrect helpful, especially on Coach Charlie's Tip of the Week. Listen to our podcast with me, Coach Charlie Melton, on any podcasting platform or on the MPB Public Media app. Hello, thanks for tuning in to Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. Yesterday was a big day for many high school students across the state. The Mississippi High School Activities Association crowned the eSports state champions at the University of Southern Mississippi on December 12th. If you aren't aware, an eSport, or electronic sport, is an activity where competitors battle against each other in a video game to see who is the best. Today I'm going to take you through my first experience of being at an eSports event in person at the Mississippi High School State Championships. The students combated each other in three different video games, Super Smash Bros., Madden NFL, and Rocket League. Four schools qualified for each video game, meaning 12 schools total were in attendance. Players started their day with a semifinals matchup, and if they won, advanced to the finals. The victors then earning the title of state champion. If you have any questions or comments about this show or the championships, email me at everydaytech at mpbonline.org. Everyday Tech presenting the MHSAA Esports State Championships on MPB Think Radio. If I were to ask you who the most iconic video game character of all time is, the answer would probably unanimously be Mario. Nintendo's flagship character, alongside many of his friends, make up the cast of the first game featured at the eSports Championships, Super Smash Bros., shortened to simply Smash. The game originally featured exclusively Nintendo characters using their abilities to fight against each other, but expanded to include other video game characters as well. So you can see matches where Mario takes on Pac-Man, or Link from The Legend of Zelda attempts to best the Final Fantasy VII protagonist, Cloud. The mode of the game that is typically used for competitions can most similarly be compared to sumo wrestling. You and your opponent do your best to knock each other off of the stage. The longer you fight and the more you get hit, the more likely you are to get knocked further off of the stage, which is shown by a steadily increasing percentage at the bottom of the screen. Every time you get knocked off, you lose one of your chances, which is called a stock, and you only get a certain number of stocks. Once someone loses all of their stocks, the match ends and the match's point goes to the player left standing. You play multiple matches to determine the winner in a best of three series. Then, the way MHSAA does it, one of your two other teammates steps in and plays a series, then the other. Schools play a best of five series set, so the first team to win three series wins the set. Now that you know the basics of the rules going into it, Let's check in with one of my friends that I met yesterday. All right, that was just the end of the first semifinals of Smash Brothers. That was Northwest Rankin just took the lead, just took the win over Germantown High School. Uh, and I, I'm here with Aaron Pippen, who is about to cast the next Smash semifinals. Are you are you casting in the grand finals as well? Yes, yes, I am. Uh, yeah, I'm casting both the, the Madden semis uh, and Madden finals, as well as the Smash semis and Smash finals, yes. Wow, busy day. So how did you get into casting esports of all things uh whenever i first got to college well my high school really didn't have a big esports team uh we had like i think overwatch and splatoon and i played on the overwatch team um but my main game that i really played a lot was uh rainbow six siege uh i've always played that game since i was since it basically came out um so when i joined up at southern and i realized i had a a siege team uh, i wasn't good enough to make it the first year (laughs) so what i did is is i just started casting i casted every siege game uh had a good time with that but uh our director uh mr toast mr david dick he uh he said hey you're a great caster we love your energy we love your personality i want to hire you full-time as our caster for every game and i said well i know nothing about league of legends so we'll give it a try (laughs) but eventually i did learn and uh ever since then i've just been casting my heart away every night cool so you've got smash and madden coming up yes yes i do all right so your your next match is smash coming up in like five minutes or so what do you expect from smash coming up uh you know always uh, every time i go into a smash game i always expect utter domination from at least one side but obviously our smash team is not here which does the utter domination uh we have a really good smash here smash team here at southern um so i'm really interested to see uh specifically uh uh, player, not player. Uh, sorry, character to character, uh, like battles, like how they relate to one another, how they're able to fight against one another. Um, I know that at least one of the players from uh, Saint Clair, not Saint Clair. That's a that's a college. Uh, 
that one team. I know that they're a DK player, uh, Donkey Kong, which is the character I mainly play. Right. So I have a lot of like interest in that. I want to see how he plays it compared to me, who's not very good at the game. Um, really, I'm, I'm taking it more as a learning experience. Uh, but I know both of these teams are really, really well. I mean, that's the reason they're here. So I'm expecting something close. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, Aaron. Uh, have a good time casting. Good time uh, with the – thank you guys for being part of this esports thing. Um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Southern Miss, for putting it on, and uh, thank all of you guys. Uh, so here we go, getting started with Smash coming up. Let's do it. All right. We just finished up with the St. Martin versus Saltillo match. I'm here with the victor. How did it go? It went pretty well. I, they fought well, and I'm happy they made it here. Yeah, this is uh, Oscar from St. Martin, and I'm standing with – Benita, the coach. Coach Benita, uh, what was your, I don't know if you can give me any strategies, but did you have anything that, any strategies, any game plans going into this match? Uh, there was not really a strategy. I wanted it to be a surprise for me. I do love fighting other opponents. It does make it unique, interesting, and different. Yeah, yeah for sure. And then uh, did you give him any advice in the middle of the game? Not in the middle of the game. Uh, I think the best way that I try to help prepare him is usually at school we put two against one. So two players against him uh, to make him fight better, to play a little bit harder. And Wow, wow, wow. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Oh, no, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah, so that helps him out a little bit to watch out what's going on more on the stage and who's coming at him at the same time. Wow, so that's some hard prep stuff, man. How do how do you adjust to two players versus one? Uh, we we do tournament rules, which is uh, team attack on. Well, some tournament rules. Some people keep it off, and uh, I make them fight themselves instead of me. And I just keep dodging. That's probably my strongest point within the game is dodging. All right, and you uh, you got some school friends here with you, right? Yeah. How's it going? All right, you guys ready to see you guys in the final? Well, still, we're looking forward. To, hopefully, we get to see you in the finals. Keep fighting hard. Uh, so, who you got up next? My second player, IMT captain, and my second player, Austin Odom, is fighting Centello. All right, perfect. Well, good job. Uh, we'll keep watching here, uh, and I'll, I'll keep updating as we go on through the day. Thank you very much, Oscar. No problem. Thank you. We just finished up the semifinals between St. Martin and Saltillo, and St. Martin closed it out with a win. Uh, how do you feel about your guys taking care of that right there? I'm proud of them. They've played hard. Um, I'm proud of both teams. They've met up before, um, actually in person in North Mississippi, and so they've seen each other play before, but both teams are good teams. I hate that either one had to lose, but I'm really proud of both teams. Yeah, both teams were playing well. Saltillo, I'm, I'm here with both coaches. I didn't mention that at first. Saltillo's coach right here with me as well. Jason from Saltillo, how did uh, how did your guys perform to, compared to what you were expecting? You know, they had a long season. Um, you, I'm sure you're proud of what they've done th this season. Oh, yeah. They uh, they didn't lay down. Uh, it was actually close in most of the matches. Uh, if anybody knows the uh, the smash count of stock, it wasn't a 3-0 most of the time there. It was, it was pretty strong back and forth. Uh, had to go into the fourth round or fourth set. Uh, so it's not one of those just, you know, fall over type situations. Uh, the guys adjusted and they worked it hard, but uh, the St. Martin players were – very skilled and adaptable just like us so it was a lot of back and forth so it was a very entertaining game i think it was very good to see a final four match that uh, went as far as it did yeah yeah for sure i mean top four is nothing to be ashamed of very very proud of you guys and uh, the reason i wanted to get both of you all over here um is because you know we're kind of in a small little area all of your players are and all of your school is all in here together they're all laughing together cheering exclaiming as as the match went on uh how do you feel about the esport going in that direction you know that that both teams can sit there and be happy and friendly with one another Lots of good camaraderie. Uh, there's there's plenty of etiquette. Uh, nobody does the uh, trash talk. It's more about, hey, here's something else you can do. Hey, did you see how I did that? And sort of showcasing talent and skill versus trying to pull anything, uh, you know, underhanded. It's about making everybody better, and they all enjoy the sport, so that's why they all push each other to make it better and more competitive. I do enjoy them um, cheering on each team, and it's sincere. They, Like I said, we've met each other before, and our guys have cheered each other on, and I've enjoyed and I teach the kids to, you know, 
be for other teams as well. If it's a good play, it's a good play. Whether it was our play or whether it was the other team's play, it was a good play. So you need to let them know it was a good play. Absolutely. So thank you both for being here. Thanks for taking the time to let me talk to you for a second. Good luck in the finals, and uh, appreciate you showing up. Uh, put on a good fight. It was good stuff. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Northwest Strankin and St. Martin both won their semifinals, which led them to each other in the eSports Super Smash Brothers Grand Finals. I want to give a warm welcome to the Loud Ball to the Northwest Rankin Movers! Woo! St. Martin West Rankin taking the first match of a potential five. Another two to zero for Northwest Rankin. Really defensive match on that one. A lot of dodging back and forth. Um, so kudos to both players. Looking forward to see if St. Martin bounces back. And they've got a long run ahead of them if they want to reverse sweep this series. Set score is 2-0 for Northwest Rankin. Both series were 2-0 as well. So we'll see how all these matches go. The crowd loved that one. St. Martin coming back with a 2-0 in that series. Uh, still have two more series to win to win the set. What a great play from uh, both characters. Both players did really well in that match. We'll see what happens in going into the next series. We are close, close in this fourth series, the first match of the fourth series. One stock left for each player, almost equal percentages. This could go either way. Both players playing really safe right now, not wanting to take a whole lot of risks. That could be it. That's it! That is it. St. Martin's Joker took the first match off of Northwest Rankin's Lucario. Neither player wants to switch their character. They're both confident in what they had going in the first one, and it, with reason, that was very close in that first match. Again, in this series, we are tied one-to-one -one stocks. Equal percentage, 61-62%. to 62%. Joker versus Lucario. As close as it could be, and then Joker gets launched off. Will he get? He's going for the risky play. Both players recover. Could be it. That's it. All right, getting into match three of these two. Will Lucario and Joker face off again, or will we get another character change? There it is. Lucario versus Joker for the third time straight. St. Martin trying to stay alive in this match, trying to keep their state championships hope alive. We'll see how that goes. Here we are, one-to-one -one stocks yet again, Lucario versus Joker. Joker struggling a little bit, bringing it back. Oh, that could be it. That's it. Is that it? And he recovers. He recovers and turns back. Lucario recovers after a long time off the stage. Real, real close match. 110 to 112 percentage. One stock left each. 118. And that's it. That's it. Lucario knocks Joker off. That is it. Northwest Rankin is your state champions. All the applause must go to the grand champions, the Northwest Rankin Cougars. I'm here with Northwest Rankin player Lane. How does it feel to walk away as your... This is your first time being state champion, correct? Yeah. How are you feeling? I feel great. It was really stressful because I thought Noah was going to lose, maybe. And then I would have to clutch up and win, but I didn't. So is this your This is your first year taking part of the eSports? Yes, it is. Yeah, so you're a ninth grader, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so what's that like being that your first year and you make it this far all the way to the state championships? 
you did lose your own series, but your your teammates clutched it up, and you had you were able to bring home the state champion. How does that feel? It feels really good, and I feel like I've definitely improved a lot over the years. I was struggling in the beginning, like right before playoffs, but then like right before playoffs, I found like who I really like to play, and so I started improving a lot faster. Yeah, and Noah said uh, a lot of y'all's success uh, of improving this year comes from you and uh, you, that he really appreciates how much effort and time you've put into this. So what do you have to say to your teammates that, you know, help lift you up in these times? Uh, they're great teammates. They're really good. They're great teammates. They help lift me up. I don't know really what else to say, but besides that, they're really good teammates. All right, cool. Will, will we see you again in spring back at the eSports State Championship? Probably. And I'm yeah. here with the think so? Lucario main yeah. from the last All right, match well, of thank the day. you so much, Smash man. Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, you know, what, Noah, you did an incredible job. What, what went through your head as you were the one that – did y'all all come together to decide that you should come out and play the fourth set? Um, We knew from the start that Ricky was going to be the biggest threat on their team. And I wanted to – play against him because I know that both of my teammates have a lot of issues with like pressure and stress so I really wanted to just like take that from them so what's it like you know this is your second time being a state champion yep so what's it like coming up here repeating you know with two new teammates you know you're the you're the one constant uh so what is what does that feel like coming up here proving that you could do it again uh, it felt a lot like a president's second term. It's never as good as the first one, but it's still a <laughs> rock solid if you can make it that way. Right, right. You know, class act from you, shouting out your opponent, you know, shouting out the challenge that he gave you and shouting out your teammates. Anything else you would like to say? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> so, so I see your mom is here. What do you have to say to your mom as far as, you know, allowing you to pursue this extracurricular activity of esports and you getting this far thank you for forcing me to join something at school all right well noah i appreciate you sir you have a good one uh good luck in spring or i'm assuming you'll be back in spring uh ethan says y'all will be back at the state championships in spring so i'm counting on that we will be here <laughs> all right perfect y'all have a good one y'all be safe I'm never Our next game is one that most Americans are quite familiar with, Madden's NFL Series. And yes, that's NFL as in the National Football League. Each year, the game company EA releases a new edition of Madden NFL with that year's NFL team's rosters. So each user is able to pick from a slate of that year's best teams. However, there is one big difference between the Madden video game and the actual sport of football, and that would be the speed of play. The quarters are shorter, the seconds tick faster, and adding to that speed, there's the strategic line of scrimmage play calling. Once users line up against each other, they might change plays four or five times before they actually hike the ball, all within a matter of seconds. Users play the best of three game series to determine the victor. All right, the Madden Esports first semifinal between Murrah and who did you guys play? Knoxville. Between Murrah and Knoxby just wrapped up, and I've got the winners, uh, Warren from Murrah. How did that match go for you? How do you think? Uh, I think I think it went well for me. I had a few stuff to clean up in the first game. I made a couple of mutual errors because you know, I was a little nervous, but you know, I cleaned it up in the second game and still got work to do. Yeah. All right, all right. So already looking forward to the next one. Uh, yeah, I'm just like clearing my head, trying to you know stay loose, stay right. See if I uh, come win this championship. All right, so when is your finals match? Uh, today at 3. Today at 3, and it's 12 right now. So you, you, what are you, you going to do in the meantime? You got to ice up yourself, or you got to calm down, warm up? What do you think? Uh, probably go get something to eat, uh, you know, relax, walk around, enjoy the view. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, Coach, how, how, did, how did it look in your mind? How did things go? Oh, it was fantastic. I'm very proud of Warren. Warren did, did really well. First time I ever seen him sweat, close first game. Second game, he came back, he found his way, and he went back to his ways of playing and winning. And uh, I'm just very impressed, looking forward to the next one. Cool, cool. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you guys on the stage. I've heard the stage is quite a sight. Um, so good luck. Good luck to you. Go get you some food. I don't want to keep you much longer. So I uh, appreciate you talking to me. Thank you. 
All right, we just finished the last semifinal of the day. Uh, Madden uh, Madden Esports. We had Tishomingo County taking on West Point. And how did that go, Coach? Uh, we lost. We lost uh, 2-0. Uh, first game, super close, super good match. It was 28-21 uh, to 21 in favor of West Point. In that second game, it was 28-0. Um, my guy, he got a little bit in his own head, you know, um, decided to do stuff he hasn't done all season instead of focusing on what he knows, and it, it got away from him. But uh, there at the end, he went back to what he was doing, and he was moving the ball down the field. And it's like I talked about just afterward, you know, you got to focus on what you've done all season. You can't let one loss uh, hold you back because it's the best two out of three. If he would have been able to win that one, it forced a game three. So uh, that was the big thing, and uh, he's a senior, uh, I believe, uh, Friday's his last day. Um, he's graduating early, so this was his last uh, attempt to go for a, a state title, and uh, he's enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, he was the number seven seed, beat the two seed to get here, and uh, yeah, just just to do that, he was super excited. So it was, um, it's been a good season for him, and this is something I'm sure he'll remember on his high school career. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, like you, you said, you know, you, you gotta. You, sometimes you're in this, and you kind of get into your own head. What is your advice as a coach when when that kind of starts to happen? Well, in if I was the student, when you, when you get in your own head, you just gotta go back to your roots. What got you here? Uh, for him, it's his run game. Uh, he goes back to the run game. The ball starts moving down the field. And in a game like Madden, everyone wants those big, flashy plays. You want the highlight plays. You want to. You want that. And when you're only getting two or three yards on the ground, you know. You, you're wanting more when in reality if you're constantly getting four yards in madden no one can stop you you're always going to score and uh that's why i was talking to with the coach with west point he's like that's why when you look at the pros those running backs average three to four yards a carry that's all they need to do and that's kind of what you have to do you kind of have to ground yourself and uh and his home is running the ball and when he returned to that in that second half of that game he was moving the ball down the field just couldn't get in the end zone but he was moving the ball which is something he didn't do in the first half so that's what you got to do just go back to what you're comfortable with. Don't try to be fancy. Don't try to go over the top. Do what got you to this stage. Right. All right. Well, Coach, I appreciate you. You know, you guys did good just to get here. That's an excellent achievement. That's top four in the state. So well done to both of you. Um, I hope you have a good next season and uh, good luck in the future. Thank you. I'm here with Coach Xavier from West Point who just had the victory in Madden. Uh, Coach, how did that go? Uh, It went well. Our player, he's very disciplined. He knows his offense. He'll run it. He pays attention very well. He dissects on defense. I think he has the best defense in this tournament, so I rely on him a lot. I think he plays really well. He plays sound football, and he listens very well, and he picks up on a lot of tendencies from other players. Yeah, that's that's good. You know, uh, adjusting on the fly, that's a big part of this this eSport. And, you know, you've got your you, – so you guys have made it to the finals, right? Yes, sir. It's our first year here, and he's – like I say, he surprised us all with how good he's been playing so far, and we just hope that he get, gets better and has more opportunities to play. Absolutely. Well, we look forward to seeing you in the finals. That's at 3 o'clock? Yes, sir. All right. Well, we'll see you later. Uh, maybe we'll get to talk to you at the end. Appreciate you. I have been called over by a friend named Quentin Tate. He, he wants to talk to me about uh, taking your time and investing in – into these students' lives uh, as they play these esports. What's what you got on your mind? Hey, I'm head coach at Nashville County High School. Uh, one of the big things we come across is funding sometimes because we know these systems can get quite expensive, and it's very important that the community uh, support the esports program because the esports program can be a huge benefit to the community. I've been doing this for around five years now. One of the huge things I've seen is the support I get from my fellow teachers, the community themselves, they've contributed a lot and we've, um, everything from devices to monetary um, support, it's just a huge help and allows us to have this program and it's flourished and it's grown in those past five years. We've seen um, the number of students go from being maybe five to, I'm looking forward to probably 20 or 25 in this upcoming spring um, semester and that's all because of donations help the charity of people in the community so i definitely highly recommend everyone to do so because the only thing you can do is help so yeah esports communities are really expanding and uh you really uh, and it's not it's not something that you guys can do yourself we have to have help from the community that's the best way we all can grow
Yes. All right, Quentin. I appreciate your time. Thanks for calling me over. We'll uh, we'll definitely look forward to hearing more from Knoxby County in the future. So I appreciate you guys. Good luck in your spring season. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. Both Murrah and West Point were successful earlier in the day, but in time they had to face each other in the grand finals of the Madden Esports State Championship. The Murrah Mustangs. West Point Greenway. The Chiefs take the game 21 to nothing. So that's a Murrah game win up 1 0. Murrah going to stick with Chiefs, and West Point also choosing to stick with the 49ers. So no team change. West Point confident he can come back from this. So we'll see how this turns out in game two. Wild and unfortunate start to the second game. The first half just did not go well for the 49ers. Uh, West Point was had a great drive, was first and goal, ended up getting the field goal block on fourth and goal, and then that was a converted into a touchdown for the Chiefs. And then on the kickoff return, he fumbled again and that lost the ball again. So we've got Chiefs up 19-0 in the third quarter. And uh, 49ers are really looking for a lot to come back into this game. And I believe that will be a forfeit there. So he puts out of the game. And I believe that will be it. If I'm not mistaken, it is the best of three. That is it. A big play from the Chiefs on the defense with an interception. Not a whole lot of time left. The player forfeits from West Point. Murrah is your state champion in Madden. But of course, we have to welcome to the stage now. The grand final win going to Murrah Mustangs. I'm here with the winners from Murrah. We got Warren, the player, and Coach McGinnis. And we talked to you guys earlier, and you guys were, you felt pretty confident going into this. How do you feel right now? Uh, you know, I feel you no know, great right now. I was able to bring home the championship. You know, I feel confident in my ability since day one. You know, just how the resources and the time and the amount of effort, you know, put in reps every day, playing, man, you know, something I like to do for fun, really. I can just compete competitively, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And now you've got the title of number one in the state. State championship, it says, eSports Fall 23 state champion in Madden NFL. How is how is that uh, title suit, suit you? Uh, you know, it just means that I'm currently the best, you know. I'm trying to keep that win in the spring, you know, just continuously representing Murrah as a whole school. Is this the first time that you've played on stage? It actually is, you know. I felt good out there. Not really too much nerves, just you know, staying loose, having fun at the end of the day. Absolutely. Coach, what do you have to say to uh, you know, any other fellow esports coaches out there that um, you know, are trying to push their kids? How do you keep a, a guy like this inspired? Just uh, you know, give them the best opportunities possible, open the uh, doors up to them, just give them every opportunity that you can, basically, and just encourage them. Even when they're not doing so well, just keep encouraging them because anything happen. They just practice, put the work in, and it'll work out for them. All right, Coach McGinnis and Warren, I appreciate you guys. Congratulations on your state championship trophy. Y'all have a good time. All right, thanks. <laughs> Rocket League, the final game of our state championships. The title might be unfamiliar to those outside of the esports community, but its significance in the scene can't be understated. To simply describe Rocket League, it's a soccer game, but the player controls a jumping, flipping, flying battle car. The field is a completely enclosed, transparent arena with goals on either side. There is no out of bounds, so there is nothing to slow this high octane game down. All across the field are boost pads and canisters, which the player can use to accelerate not only forward, but upwards into the air. There's also a highly physical aspect of the game, bumps and demolitions. Players can use their car to push other cars out of the way, or if they're going fast enough, demo the other car. When a car is demoed, the player is removed from the field and must wait three seconds for the game to load them back in. As complicated as all that sounds, the object of the game is really quite simple. Put the ball into the other team's goal to get a point. When someone scores a point, the ball and teams are reset to kickoff. In Rocket League, there is no advantage at kickoff, 
Both teams are equidistant from the ball and can attack the ball once the game counts down three seconds and allows the players to move. The team with the most points after five minutes is the victor, and teams play a best-of series to see who wins the most games. Our first Rocket League semifinal match of the day was between Biloxi and Van Cleve. All right, the players are loading into the match and winding down for the last seconds of the first game. It looks like Biloxi's coming away with it. 4-0. One up. It's Biloxi over Van Cleve in the first match. Uh-oh. Van Cleve with their first goal of the series. Three minutes into the second game, and Van Cleve gets their first. And that's another goal for Van Cleve. 2-0 up with a minute left in the second game. And that's going to do it for Van Cleve. The first one of the series, 1-1. Best of seven to win. Oh, great shot out of Biloxi team. A quick lead for Biloxi, 1-0 into the game. Ten seconds in. Good save out of Biloxi. Oh, 1v1 for Biloxi on Van Cleve. And a gets it through. Good goal out of Biloxi. With 24 seconds left, two goals up for Biloxi. Van Cleve with a good kickoff for him, and they answer right back. 1-2. 17 seconds left. Close game. Keeping the ball up, and it's down. Biloxi wins the third game, 2-1. to one. Oh. Trouble on the back line for Van Cleve leads to a Biloxi goal. Biloxi with most of the pressure this game, pushing it downfield, and that's a second goal for Biloxi, a minute and a half into the third, fourth game. Big bump on the back line, Biloxi's open. Huge save, and it goes in eventually for Biloxi. And that's the end of game four, Biloxi up 3-1. Oh, good corner shot from Biloxi. And then Biloxi puts in a third straight off the kickoff, four minutes left still. Close shot, good job out of Biloxi. Goal line interference makes the Biloxi goal go in. Good shot. Good opportunity from Biloxi. That's 5-0 for Biloxi going into the last minute. All three players from Biloxi ended up in the goal at the end of that play. Two, one. Another goal for Biloxi to close out the game. Six to ten. All right. Good series from Biloxi and Van Cleve. Biloxi advanced to the finals. Here with Van Cleve player Connor. Uh, Connor, good show out there. It didn't go your way today. Um, how, how, what was the season like for you guys getting here? Uh, it was definitely a struggle because we've always been taken down by the higher ranked players, uh, Champ 3, because we have a Diamond 3 and a Diamond 2 on my team. But um, I think our chemistry is really what gets us where we need to be. Our chemistry, our passing, our communication, and that's what's got us. That's what let us take a game off of Biloxi today. Yeah, you guys did really well. Um, I'm actually here with Connor's dad as well, Dan, here with me. Um, and if I could ask you, like, what's it what's it like to have your son not play a conventional sport and to, to show up and support him and like that? What's your advice to other parents for that that would like to see that who's whose children are also interested in esports like this. Right. So I think you should get your kids involved in everything. And for him to take a liking to the uh, Rocket League and esports is definitely unconventional, but, you know, this could lead to bigger things, scholarships. It's The sport is growing. Um, there's tournaments where you can earn money and scholarships. So get your kids involved, support them, and, you know, be proud of whatever they do. And whenever you have somebody like Connor, who's not only a high achieving academically, but he has done well in esports, um, you know, you have to support that. And his coach, he goes way beyond, and he supports these kids. I appreciate that. We need more coaches to step up and support their kids, get them the exposure for whatever it is, whether it's esports, it's academically, it's baseball, soccer, whatever. You know, coaches step up, get your kids the support, show the colleges what they can do, where they're at, and, you know, just get out there. All the parents, if you're listening to this, support your kids 100%. They enjoy this, and it can lead to bigger and better things for them. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something that was not available when I was in high school, and I absolutely would have participated in had it been uh, an option for me. Now, Connor, your dad said, or your coach told me that you're graduating this year. Um, you got one more semester. You guys have spring play, right? 
Uh, you, are you looking at playing anywhere after after high school? Uh, I'm actually looking to play here uh, after high school because it's an hour away from home, um, and I just this environment i enjoy the environment and it has everything that i really want so that's awesome here being southern miss right being southern miss awesome his his dad graduated from southern miss his mom is actually attending currently so we're gonna make it a whole family thing here at southern miss all right awesome so thank you guys so much i uh, appreciate you guys for doing this good showing out of you guys i hope to see more of you in the spring hopefully i get to come back in the spring um, so top four, nothing to be ashamed of in the state. So good job, guys. Y'all have a great day. I'm here with James Collegiate, Rocket League player at USM. Uh, goes by the name of Plus Ultra. You just watched the uh, – what, what, what was the matchup we just saw from the semifinals? Uh, we saw, uh, I think it's uh, Pearl and Itawamba Agricultural High School. It was a really interesting match. Um, I think uh, Pearl was definitely the favorites going in. I know they. I played against two of those guys. They're really mechanical, quick in the air, hard to beat there. And they uh, really just dominated in the air against IHS. IAHS act, did really well defensively. They made some great stops. They did a lot. They took a game off of that team, and they put themselves in it to win it at the end. I think they did a really good performance and put up a really good fight in this match. It was a great game. So close match, and uh, we're looking at some star players on either side. Absolutely. Um, both of them, both teams have teams that could play on the team I'm at right now. They could play at the collegiate level. Um, really good teams. Uh, gonna play. They're gonna play. Uh, I feel like it's gonna be a game that's gonna be played in the air a lot. They're gonna be up high, mechanical game. It's gonna come down to who makes the least mistakes. This game. I feel like uh, whatever team can stay focused and work together best is gonna end up winning this one. Awesome. Well, thank you, James. Thanks for giving us that recap, and we'll see you back here for the finals. Yes, sir. See you for the finals. Two teams made it out of the Rocket League semifinals, Biloxi and Pearl. But only one team could be crowned the Mississippi Esports Rocket League state champion. So, let's just get into it. First team I would like to introduce are the reigning champions from last season, the Biloxi Indians. <laughs> Right, but you know, we still got another team. They're the underdogs in this one, but I mean they're gonna put up a fight. And we got the Pearl Pirates. He goes up 2 1 at halftime. Oh, a great shot from Pearl. Calm Dragon just scored an incredible double tie. Great shot out of Belosi's Kravir. And Kravir scores again. Go up 4 2 with 46 seconds left. And that's going to close it out for Belosi. After four goals in the first game, Javier Urbans with another goal. Ten seconds in. Javier going for a fifth goal of the series. Sixth goal of the series. Javier is taking over this lobby in favor of Biloxi. Javier with a seventh goal of this series so far. He is taking over. Another opportunity for Javier. Eighth goal. And here comes an opportunity from Pearl. And they score. Calm Dragon takes one over. And Biloxi just kills the clock to get that second game win. Up 2 0 over Pearl High School going into the game three. Biloxi with heavy pressure and they give off the back line. Pearl scores off of it. And that gives Pearl off the kickoff 2 0 in game three. Left one goal separating these teams, and there it is. Cry puts in another one, tied it up 2 to 2. 
47 seconds left. Pelosi quickly turns it around, and we are into our first overtime of the series, 2-2 two to two after five minutes. So golden goal. Next goal wins for Biloxi or Pearl. Oh, trying to make the shoot down. What a save from Tribe here. An opportunity from Pearl. Oh, no! A missed touch from Biloxi results in a goal for Pearl. Oh, big reset. Huge. Huge goal for Biloxi. Again, a less than 30 second goal. Perfectly played. Oh, no. Little bit of an own goal. Not quite saved away. 2 0 for Biloxi. Oh, great pass. Can he slot it? Not quite. There it is. All three players involved in the goal for that one. What a play from Biloxi. 3-0. Smart play from Biloxi. Really slowing the game down. Don't want to take many risks. Up two with a minute left. Three, two, one. And that's Biloxi with another win. Up 3-1 in the series. They need one more game to close out the series and become state champion. Pearl with some offensive possession on the blue side of the field. Almost puts it in. Good return. Oh, rule one. Oh, no. And they're going to keep it. A rule one is a happenstance in Rocket League that probably happens you know, one in 100 games. So the fact that it happened in a grand finals is wild. A rule one is what they call it when two cars lock into each other, fender to fender, and remain there till they're bumped away from each other or sometimes even till the end of the game. The thing is, there's nothing in the game that makes these two players stay together. One could reverse or jump away at any time. It's simply a gentleman's agreement to remain locked with the other car and trust your teammates to win the game. They're going to keep it in the state championship game. It could be the deciding game, and they're going to keep the rule one locked in. The entire dynamic of this game has changed with both players in a rule one. Uh-oh, opportunity for Pearl. Biloxi overcommitted. Will they get a goal? They get one! Taking Cryvere out of the game resulted in Pearl getting a goal back. Taking the lead 3-2 to two with less than a minute left. Pearl gets another goal right quickly after the kickoff. Lux are trying to make this goal. They've got a chance! One goal separates these teams with four seconds left. Biloxi might make this happen, and they might close out the series right now. Oh, couldn't keep the ball up, and that is game for Pearl. Two to three. Kickoff in game six. Pearl trying to force a game seven. Oh, big shot from Biloxi, and they get the goal. 1-0, three minutes, 30 seconds left. I'd love to see a game seven. Oh, and Biloxi grabs another goal. Three minutes left in the game. 2-0. Open net. And another goal for Biloxi. 3-0. Two and a half minutes left. Half time of the game. Biloxi with a fourth goal. Oh, perfect. Cryvier glued the ball to him and carried it all the way into the goal. 5-0 for Biloxi. And there's another goal for Biloxi. 6-0, 30 seconds left. It's looking like Biloxi will be your state champions. And it feels like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that's going to do it. Biloxi is the state champion. For your champions, the Biloxi Indians. I'm here with Biloxi player Colton, also known as Cryvere, who kind of stepped it up in the first two games. We saw a lot of highlights. I think he had eight goals in the first two games. All eight of uh, Biloxi's goals were yours. 
How, how do you feel about your performance after that one, that, that series? It feels really good, really, really good. The first two games where I scored eight goals, I'm not going to lie, I didn't even notice the first game. Like, it's all about teamwork. If you don't work together, you're not going to win. you got to work together. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, um, Pearl kind of started to bring it back a little bit, and you guys started implementing that more physical bump demo play. Um, was that a game plan that you guys had in your back pocket, or is that something you all talked about to start getting involved in? It's kind of ingrained in the way we play and the way we rotate around the field. But at the end of the day, it's a weakness towards him. So we kind of implemented it and used it against them. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Good job. Congratulations on being a state champion in Rocket League. Thank you. Uh, good luck next semester. Thank you, sir. All right, and I'm here with tournament organizer Keith Warren, rep- MHSAA representative. Keith, that was an excellent event today. Thank you so much for putting it on. How do you feel at the end of the day? Oh, it went fantastic. You know, um, just to see the kids, how they interact, and you know, they walk into this incredible facility here at USM and this theater, and they see their eyes open wide. They haven't been in a championship event like this before, and to, to thank to Southern for allowing us this facility and the kids they so much enjoy it and the coaches too and you know we're just so thankful that the uh, school administrators are putting an effort into this event into the sport because without them you know they're supporting it with uh, a coach and uh, infrastructure at the schools and without them none of this could happen but at the end of the day is to see the smile on the faces that's what it's all about and they're truly enjoying it and we're just hoping it continues to grow any final shouts to USM and your you know your sponsors and, and the parents and people that came out today. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we started this back in uh, 2019 and we, it wasn't a championship event. And then we went to, uh, when we first started the championships, it was a small venue in Jackson. And this has just stepped it up. And, and USM has provided so much for us. I mean, we, there's no way we could do it without them. They, they've been fantastic. And, you know, the parents come and watch them today. It's one of the first events. You know, we had a full house. And that's, that's different. We haven't had that before. So, you know, coming to spring, we're going to add some more games. And, uh, I think it's going to get even better. Yeah, absolutely. And I I spoke with a student earlier today who said, you know, this eSport, Rocket League eSport, gave him an opportunity, and he's looking at a scholarship now to uh, a college. Um, So thanks to to you guys for making this possible for him and uh, for many of these other students that have previously, you know, with conventional sports may not have quite fit the bill but now they've got a chance. Absolutely. You know, this is a place where they fit. I've had a principal tell me one time, without this, they probably would have lost some students to dropping out, but this is a place they can fit in and feel part of a team. And so, you know, building that team uh, um, with all the things that go with a regular sporting event, this is just like that for them. They have to communicate. They have to be have teamwork. And so we love it. We think this is fits a void. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Keith, so much for today. Uh, I can I can only sing its praises. I hope if you listen to this, you check it out next spring. If you missed any of this show, make sure you check out Everyday Tech on your favorite podcasting app or ch- download the MPB public media app. Everyday Tech at mpbonline.org is where you can contact us. Thank you again to USM and MHSAA for putting the eSports State Championships on. Thank you for the schools. Thank you for everyone allowing me to come here. This is Abram Naney with MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.